what's up everybody okay so today I'm gonna do a quick tutorial um, on how to set up the DX tree for pretty much the perfect settings for recording gameplay um, I had a I had a quite a bit of trouble getting this all set up myself so I'm gonna do one uh, episode for DX tree and I'm gonna do a separate episode for Sony Vegas um, I don't myself use fraps I find that DX tree works for me a lot better some guys swear by fraps, but I like the fact that you can edit separate audio channels and things like that with, with DX3. So that's the program I use and the one I'm going to stick with. So anyways, uh, we'll get started right here on the general general tab. So here on this screen here, um, there's nothing. This, this just basically is your information screen. It tells you... Um, the things that are running like once you actually start it up it'll tell you like information about the game that you're playing or whatever the case is or whatever piece of software it is that's running so up top here we have a drop down list in this drop down list we have all the different games that you have played it makes a new profile for each game that you load up while the extra is running and each one can be set with its own individual settings so anyways um we're going to go on to this tab this tab you just basically leave alone. Default settings are fine unless you want to change the colors or mess around with it. I just set one to green, one to red so that I know whether it's recording or not. Um, these just show like FPS shows the FPS of your game in the top corner. Um, the write file FPS shows how fast you're actually re recording to your hard drive and record status just self-explanatory it's uh, whether or not you're recording or not which is this you could actually untick doesn't really matter because uh, if you define these colors here it'll tell you by color whether or not you're recording so next we'll go on to this tab this tab here this shows your hard drives and where you're gonna record to so basically what you can do is you can set up um, each individual um, hard drive that you have and test each and every single one of them to determine which one which hard drive is the fastest so you pick a directory where you want to save your stuff so for me it's mainly I use this one so it's uh, Z gameplay raw files alright and then you can click on here and click run and what it's gonna do is it's gonna run a benchmark on your hard drive to see how fast you can actually record to that hard drive so mine slowed down a bit I guess so 128 from 161 so that's fine uh, when I did that test it was a brand new hard drive so it's uh, it's ex to be expected that a hard drive will slow down a bit once it fills up a bit so anyways yeah so that's basically what you do you just choose choose here you gotta click on here choose where you want it to to go and yeah that's where your files will be saved you can add folders with this button here and you can move up the priority of the folder I'll show you after too um, why they have this list it's because you can multiple click and you can actually store your files to two or three or even four separate hard drives all at the same time in in file chunks so that um, if you have really slow hard drives or whatever the case is it might make it a little bit more lossless and less uh, chance of lag if you use multiple hard drives and then combine the files afterwards I'll show you how that's done afterwards anyways so now we're gonna move on to this tab here this tab is just a hotkeys really I don't need to explain this I mean they're pretty self-explanatory I think you guys anybody that wants to use this they can read and see what what it does uh, I just leave it default but I mean if you have a game that you know maybe uses F12 for something which there's not too many games that do uh, I know for one Guild Wars does use it and so you have to switch it out for for that game to another um, to another hockey but you'll figure that out when you're playing the games and then you just come back in here and switch switch to whichever buttons you want and another thing is at the top of all these boxes you'll notice there's use default setting so when this is clicked this when you make changes in here that's for every single new game that you gets added to your to your repository here so um, if you want for a specific game to have different settings like as in Guild Wars where you want to have F12 as a separate uh, as a different hotkey here 
you just unclick this and then for this game in particular when you're on this game you have to have this game highlighted the one that you want to have a different setting just unclick that then make your setting changes and leave it unclicked and it'll be different for that game all right so on to this tab this is probably the most important tab when recording gameplay so here's where you're going to choose the codec that you use and things like that like uh, how you're going to record the file basically um, I suggest using Lagerith lossless codec but there's other codecs out there that are pretty good from what I've heard is a lot of people have had success with this codec here x264 I personally uh, have problems with it so I don't bother with it and some other people use xvid personally I find this is the best recording if you have some hard drive space it is it is fairly decent size still but it is slightly smaller than fraps and things like that and I find it's just very good quality and I'll put a link in the description on how to get the Lagerith lossless codec it's pretty easy I mean you can just google it to Lagerith and you'll come up with a million hits on how to get it and whatever but I'll I'll put a direct link in the in the description box below so um, once you choose your codec you can go in here and there's some options for Lagerith in particular um, a lot of people like to use the YUY2 or the YV12 um, it will save you some hard drive space and uh, I believe that the quality difference is not it's it's very minimal um, I just choose RGB because I like to put out like as good a quality as I can and the RGBA just seems overkill to me and it's huge files and I just don't want to deal with that so basically uh, I choose RGB you can choose YUV or or YUY2 or YV12 and really you're not going to notice the difference in quality it's so minute but whatever so the only thing else I click in here is I click use multi-threading that's just for if you have uh, a multi-core CPU um, so anyways that's uh, that's basically it this will give you the best the best output in my opinion <laughs> alright so none of these don't bother changing any of these you don't have to deal with it um, for output I always I always choose a frame rate first of all of uh, 29.97 alright it's just an industry standard I mean you can choose 30 frames if you want or whatever um, the only thing is I'm gonna mention here is whenever you make a change in here um, you always have to go down here to video settings click it and when you get this window make sure that you change the frame rate here as well so that it's so that it equals whatever you have as the frame rate in here I noticed with myself uh, at first I, I changed this one here to 29.7 or 97 and this one was still at 30 frames and it uh, it did cause me a little bit of problems so just make sure that um, this button down here is your video settings the yellow one and make sure that you switch and go to uh, 29.97 um, I'm gonna keep this open for a second same thing goes for this um, if you're recording in 1920 by 1080 or say you say you're recording in 720 720p or whatever any of these uh, different different ones uh, different resolutions make sure that you choose the proper resolution that matches what you're recording uh, what what the format is of the like whatever game it is you're recording so that they they completely match because you get the best uh, output that way you can change you can you can like uh, play in 1080p and record in 720p and things like that I I don't suggest it but I mean we're in a day and age where most people have a pretty solid internet connection so it's it's not much difference uploading a 1080p to a 720p file if you're uploading like say to YouTube or Vimeo or something like that so anyways um, on to the next one we'll close this up yeah other than that you don't really have to change anything else in here so down here we can set the percentage of the screen that we're gonna record at uh, or we can set it by the size I always just set it at a hundred percent so that it's equivalent to whatever it is that I'm recording which I always play games at 1080p so I I'm at a hundred percent all my settings stay the same that way and it's pretty universal so um, include mouse cursor 
is a good one. It's only for certain games that you want to do this. Like uh, one, for instance, is World of Warcraft, where it uses a cursor mouse. So in games where there's a graphical mouse, you're not going to need this button, and you're not actually not going to want it on. But uh, for games that use use the cursor as as your mouse cursor, like such as WoW, and I I'm not sure if Diablo does, but quite possibly, you're going to want to click this and add it in case you want uh, your video to have like for people to see what you're doing. Um, the direct show output up here, this is mainly for live streaming. This is if you're going to uh, combine DX3 with XSplit or whatever the case is, you know, so you can leave this unchecked unless you're live streaming. Um, file format, AVI or raw cap. AVI, um, use this if you're only recording to one hard drive. Um, if you're going to do the split uh, files, like if you have slow hard drives and things like that, you can switch to raw cap. The only difference with it is when you record in raw cap, at the end you're not going to have a standard AVI file. You're going to have uh, multiple files and they're going to be basically useless until you come down to this box here and open it up and then you'll have to combine your files using these tools here. Um, I, I myself personally don't use this because I, I figure it's just easier to record to one hard drive as long as you have a fast hard drive. But some people don't have that option. So once, once uh, you have built some raw cap files, you'll just see them down here in the box. You can select them and then click, click here and build the selected files. And that'll basically just create the AVI that this would have created um, out of the raw cap files. Uh, I'm going to warn you, it does take qu quite a while if uh, you record a fairly big file with raw cap. It takes a quite a bit of time uh, to, it's like, it's like one extra step of encoding, you know, like, in, I mean, when we're recording gameplay, I just find we're already recording, or we're doing a lot of encoding and things like that and converting and all that kind of stuff and whatever. I just find taking out that extra step is much easier if you can. If you can't though, like I said, you got to do what you got to do so these options are available. And those options are again are all under the this little pink raw cap conversion button here. So anyways, uh, that's about it. Uh, you don't want to ever click clipping. Well, I mean you might want to. It's your, it's your choice. But basically what it does is it just clips the size of the screen so you can like take a section like say the top right hand or left hand corner here yeah if, if you just want that part of the the game you're playing showing or whatever the case may be i don't see a real use for it and i mean you don't really want to just scale it in here either because the thing is is if you're recording at like 1080p or something and you do that you'll end up with black box like a black box all the way around if you scale everything in and stuff like that it's like i said it's up to you it's there for your use but i i suggest not using it for good quality videos all right, so we're going to go on to the sound and uh, check this out. Now, so this is my favorite part. This is why I use DX3 mainly. Um, with this, with this, uh, this panel here, you can choose to have multiple audio sources. So what, what, what this means is basically you can choose, uh, like you start out usually with only one box here. It's just a number one. And it'll be basically recording from your speakers or whatever the case is, maybe your headphones or whatever it is that it has it set to. So what you do is you click that one, you set it to, uh, say, say your speakers, right? And then when, like I said, if, you, if you've never used it before, you're not going to have this number two. So what you do is you would click here, you would add another source. So in this case, I added a third source. So you can add multiple sources. I think you can add up to six sources, I believe. But anyway, so what the, I'm going to just remove this for now. So what, what this does is on the second one, you can then take the output from your microphone. Or in my case, I have it set up. The first one is my microphone, my Yeti. And the second one is my optical output headphones. So what you do is you choose... You, you have to choose your audio format. I always choose PCM because I find it's uh, the most lossless and, and it does a good job. So I choose that. I choose 48,000 by 16-bit stereo. 
I don't see any reason for going any bigger than this. I mean, this is as perfect and crisp, clear audio as you can pretty much get. I mean, anybody who's going to notice a difference between 48,000 and 192,000, well, I mean, <laughs> they got to be really picky to notice some, some difference there. I don't think there is any difference, really. So, anyways, um, so you set that, and what I do is I try and keep my audio all the same. So, if I'm going to keep 48,000 by 16-bit stereo... I'm going to go over here and it's going to be the same thing for my output for my for my computer sound. All right. So basically that's it. You set it up, make sure you have record sound clicked. Uh and again, this is use default setting depending on what game you're recording and whether you want to have uh live commentary or not. So games, you know, games like shooters and stuff, sometimes you don't want to have live commentary. You want to be yeah, you want to do your voiceovers after the game or whatever on top of the gameplay. So you you don't need to record it then. So like say Call of Duty, if you're never going to do voiceovers while you play, just set up Call of Duty as a different setting. And, and then you only have to record one audio stream and you can add in your other audio stream and your editing software afterwards. So uh, we're going to go on to this. This is just for screenshots pretty self-explanatory it just takes a screenshot picture of your thing i i don't even use this there's so many different screenshotting softwares everywhere else that i mean this is this is irrelevant whether this is even in the software but they added it in for good measure so we'll go on to this tab uh this tab here uh the only thing i do change is i come down here and i change processing threads and i i make it the maximum so whatever it is that your computer has, it's going to list it in the box here. It'll tell you how many you have, how many you have, the choices you have. And I always choose the maximum because I just want maximum power uh, going into my recording so that I never have any lag or loss or anything like that. So yeah, other than that, uh, limit video FPS. I wouldn't advise this because uh, if you're running and playing your game at 60 frames per second, and your computer drops say uh to or oh sorry if you like to play your game at 60 frames per second this is going to change your game it's actually going to create uh, a block so that your game can only play at 30 frames per second so you're going to be playing your games at 30 frames per second and recording at 30 frames per second now 30 frames per second is what i suggest for recording the, because the human eye can't can't actually read anything faster than 30 frames per second. In fact, I think the I think it can't even read past 25 frames per second or something like that. But uh, besides the point, so I figure 30 frames per second is pretty good video quality uh, for anything. Uh, I've heard that some guys will record at 60 frames per second when they're doing montages and stuff like that. But uh, that's 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 a specialized thing and. Um, for for general recording, I think 30 frames is the best, which is the 29.97 that I have on the other screen there, uh, back here. Yeah, here. So I would not set this if I were you, because it's just uh, it's going to limit your game while you're playing. It's going to mess up your game experience and things like that. And there's, I mean, we're we're not just playing to record; we're playing to have fun at the game too, right? So, anyways, yeah. So basically, yeah, the only thing I adjust here is the processing threads. Other than that, these uh, are all pretty useless. Um, this one can be useful if you're running a uh, SLI or Crossfire. Um, you can you can use this, and it might fix it. That's the thing. It's like it might fix problems. It might not fix problems. So it's it's not really determined whether or not it will. In some cases, I guess it will. In some cases, it won't. So I I wouldn't I just wouldn't worry about anything up here other than this, and the last one, uh, really it's useless. So that's about it. That's uh, that's how I'm gonna wrap up my my uh, tutorial on DX3. Um, I hope this helped you guys. Like I said, I I had a l bit of trouble setting it up, and I figured I'd show you how I set it up and got it working. And then I'll show you in the next video my render settings and my screen settings and all my preferences for Sony Vegas so that you can import into Sony Vegas because that's what I'm currently using to record my or to do my editing. So I'll show you how 
and the settings that you see here in DX3 are completely compatible that way with uh, with my settings in Sony Vegas and you can get pretty pretty awesome quality in, in my opinion so all right um, hope you guys enjoyed if it helped you at all please click, click the like button you know it always helps me out and uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos, I'm going to produce a ton more, so uh, click the subscribe button. I try to put out a video at least once every two days or so, so yeah, uh, we'll see you soon, guys.